Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Uh, today we're going to do a video on heads, the bathrooms on the ship. Uh, we didn't count all of them, but off the top of my head I can think of 15 different bathrooms on the Battleship New Jersey. Uh, and I can think of at least three or four locations where bathrooms were built in in the 40s and have since been replaced with something else. So uh, the ship was designed for a 2,000-man crew. There are a lot of facilities on board. Uh, why do we call it a head? Well, you know that old saying about the Navy, never let progress stay in the way of tradition. On the first ships in the Navy, sailing ships, the bathroom was at the front of the ship. Uh, you know, the area where the figurehead or the billet head is. Uh, you would have to go out forward of the forward bulwark and then on the uh, bow sprit on either side there, there's a planked in area. Uh, and there would be pipes from there, like a bench you could sit on with pipes leading down to the water. And because that part of the ship is going through the waves, the water is constantly washing up over there and flushing out those pipes and everything just drops straight into the ocean. Uh, so because that was at the head of the ship, the bathroom was called the head. The officers had their own uh, water closets in the wardroom and the captain's cabins that uh, were more like chamber pots that their stewards would empty every day. But uh, for the, say on one of the first six frigates, the 400 man crew would be using the head at the bow of the ship. And so all the bathrooms in the Navy, whether they're shoreside facilities or on ships like the New Jersey, it's still called the head. If you look at uh, our blueprints, uh, and somebody please do take a look at our booklet and general plans and go through and see how many times the uh, WC shows up as a label for a space, water closet, that's uh, what they're often called on there. And, and let us know how many bathrooms there actually are on an hourglass battleship. I haven't had time to count them all. Uh, but here are some common features. There are different segregated heads for officers and enlisted men. They're pretty much the same because there are fewer officers uh, in a certain area. The officers' heads tend to be smaller. They've all got the same common features. You've got urinals. The crew of these ships uh, was almost exclusively male. There are a couple of instances in which there were female sailors um, who ended up on these ships or females who visited these ships. Um, and when that happened, there were single-use, isolated heads in certain staterooms um, for guests visiting or certain isolated spaces. And there's also a dedicated female head right outside of the wardroom that was designed into the ship that way for um, if the ship hosted events. Um, but otherwise, most of the bathrooms have urinals. They also all have come out. Uh, you are seeing the 1980s style setup where you've actually got skulls and dividers. In the World War II style, it was more like long troughs with uh, wooden benches built over it that uh, would just have salt water from the fire and flushing system running through it fairly consistently. So um, that's what this ship had, even up through her Vietnam commission in a lot of spaces. Um, I can't talk about the head without mentioning the hot seat. Hot seat was often one of those slats was painted red to designate it as only crew members suffering from venereal diseases would use that one. There's some worry that it was uh, contagious, and so they usually had a segregated uh, toilet in each of the stalls for people like that, or in each head or in, at certain places around the ship. Uh, let's see what other features we have in here. There is a trash receptacle. We have deck drains. Uh, there are also spigots on the deck so that uh, pretty much every day, you turn that on, you just get water all over the place and you swab it up and there are drains in the deck here. 
It's also a steam radiator. This is fed from the ship's steam boilers that's producing uh, propulsive power for the vessel. It also creates enough steam that it can go through to radiators around the ship. Why do the heads have radiators when some other spaces do not? Because there's a lot of plumbing here. If that plumbing freezes, the water will expand and break the pipes. So remember to keep your plumbing at home warm and insulated. Uh, you've got a row of sinks. You've got mirrors. I don't know about you guys, but when I went to high school, um, the girls' bathrooms had mirrors, but the boys' bathrooms didn't. Even though it's an all-male ship, they do have mirrors. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we've got a cabinet for cleaning supplies. This space would be maintained by the crew extremely frequently, would be inspected extremely frequently, so they kept cleaning supplies nearby. Uh, and there is a larger sink for cleaning supplies, and also a natural air vent. This head is not its own separate watertight compartment. It is uh, associated with the birthing space outside. So there is no watertight door here, and uh, so there is this air vent. You can close it for privacy, or you can leave it open to uh, get air through. Look at this row of mirrors here. You see several different types. Clearly, these mirrors broke or delaminated on, on a number of occasions throughout the ship's career, and they just replaced it with whatever the current model in the inventory was. Uh, so I think it's cool that we see at least three different types down the row. Uh, and then back here we have shower stalls with towel racks. Uh, Navy showers, of course, would not uh, be particularly long. There is a very limited amount of fresh water the ship is making, and that goes to the boilers first, uh, cooking and drinking second, and then cleaning is a distant uh, afterthought. So when you're showering, there are these special nozzles that you could wash yourself down with using the minimal amount of water, turn it off, uh, and then grab your bar of soap, soap up, and then hose down again at the end. Uh, so we talked about the plumbing in this space. Let me show you a cool feature, how you can tell if a space was designed to be a head. So, we're on second deck right now. We are standing on the main armored deck of the ship, six inches thick. You notice how there's this big step up to get into the head. It's because of all the plumbing from the toilets, the deck drains, and whatnot. We can't have the plumbing, just mild steel pipes, going through the um, Class B armor deck six inches thick. So instead, we have a void space under every head. Notice it's got a hatch on it, so it's still accessible. If there is some sort of plumbing leak or whatnot, um, somebody can climb in there and access those pipes from the underside. Uh, let's come over this way. Here you can see the hot water heater that is uh, using steam from the boilers to heat the water that goes into the head in the shower. Over here is a cool space uh, this was once the shower stalls uh, associated with that uh, set of toilets over there. In the 1980s, with the smaller crew, they were able to downsize the number of uh, toilets they had and consolidate that. So this space uh, had plumbing, but it was basically unassigned. So the crew took it over, uh, and they used money from the crew's morale fund to buy uh, regular off-the-shelf washers and dryers. Now the ship has a huge uh, laundry room back aft. Why did they need to buy uh, off-the-shelf washers and dryers and put them into this former head space? You could only wash actual Navy issue uniforms in the ship's laundry room. So uh, in the 1980s, the crew was allowed to bring their civilian clothes on board and because of that, uh, they needed somewhere to wash them. They couldn't do it there, so they 
bought washers and dryers, and there are at least two locations on the ship I can think of where they, they modified like this, and they uh, had the hall technicians weld up these rudimentary brackets uh, and use the existing plumbing to create a second laundry room. Thank you guys for uh, watching this video today. Remember to uh, comment down below if you count the number of heads we had, or if you have any questions about this. Let us know if you have any uh, funny experiences in the bathroom when, from your time on ships. Uh, check the description below for ways you can support the museum and our YouTube channel. Uh, you've probably heard by this point that uh, we are going to have to close following Labor Day, and there is currently a GoFundMe out there, check the description for the link to that, where we are trying to raise enough funding to continue to do our YouTube channel over the next six months that the museum could be closed. Um, remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new content. And thanks for watching.